My name is Yolanda Davis. I am a contributor to the Apache NiFi project. And today I'm going to show you how to do JSON to JSON transformation with one of the newer processes that will be in the upcoming version of NiFi called the Jolt Transform JSON processor. And just to give you a bit of background, doing JSON to JSON transformation, there have been a variety of approaches, not in only in the context of NiFi, but also outside of it. Uh, JSON in of itself is probably one of the more easier semi-structured data formats, in my opinion, to, to deal with. And there have been plenty of approaches to basically change the schema, the incoming JSON data from one format to the next. So a lot of times people want to take really large JSON payloads. Maybe they want to pare it down. Uh, maybe they want to change attributes or label values, change formats and to pare it down into something that they want to import into HBase, HDFS, maybe a MongoDB or some other notebook SQL database in order to do some additional analytics or just ship it off to another system for analytics. So in order to achieve that, there have been several libraries people have used to make that happen. One of which is called the Jolt library, which does JSON to JSON uh, transformation using a declarative language so it makes it a lot easier for developers to create a JSON object, define what they call a specification to say hey we want this outcoming JSON to look in a particular format and then get those results and store them in some way. So this is an existing Java library that some people have leveraged which has a lot of transformations, just stock transforms already available or you can extend it if you need to do something a bit more uh, powerful or specific to your needs. So in the context of NiFi, in previous versions, there have been ways to leverage tools such as Jolt. So for example, one of the great articles out here that Matt Burgess has produced discusses how to use the execute script processor in order to achieve this. And execute script is great because it allows you to extend a lot of the features that NiFi comes with if you need it for a particular use case. And Matt does a great job in describing how you can pull in Jolt and leverage that to do JSON, convert, JSON and JSON conversion as well. He also has written a couple other articles that show you how you can use it with not only Jolt, but with JavaScript. I think he has another one with Jython. But what's interesting is that it is an example of how we would like to, or it's probably how we want to simplify this process even further. And what the community has done is great. It says, okay, there's a lot of different ways to approach this JSON and JSON transformation problem. How can we make it easier and more accessible for our users? So what was, what was done is the introduction of the Jolt Transform JSON processor, which gives you that ease of use and I talk about it here in my blog, JSON, JSON Simplified. And I'll show you how that guy works. But it basically takes that ease of use of defining a schema or a new schema for JSON and empowers it in the context of NiFi. So I'm going to show you how this works today or in the upcoming version of 0.7. I have a simple flow defined here where I pull Twitter data. And if anybody has ever seen Twitter data, it's pretty rich. In, in terms of the amount of attributes and information you get about an individual tweet. And a lot of times people just want to kind of pare that down, just only pull out what they need. And that's what this flow will achieve. So what we have is we're retrieving some Twitter data just to kind of show you a bit of the configuration here. Uh, I'm getting all things sports related. This is using the filter endpoint. And I want to learn about the Orioles or Ravens or anything that ESPN has to say because, hey, I'm from Baltimore. I can't help myself in supporting the home teams. So I'm doing a couple of things here. One area is just basically saving the raw tweet. We're just going to use that as our uh, comparison tool. And in the other direction, I'm going to transform this tweet using the new Jolt Transform JSON processor. So let's take a look how this guy is configured. So this processor, uh, in its simple property configuration, it's very straightforward. It gives you an option to select one of the built-in transformations that Jolt provides because this is powered by the Jolt library. And in this particular instance, we're using what's called the chain transformation. 
And the change transformation, I'm going to get a bit larger so we can see it. The change transformation allows you to execute multiple operations uh, for in the context of a jolt transform. In this particular case, I'm only executing one operation, but you could do more than one if you like. So there are other transformation types available. And in this case, I want to just, just uh, execute what's called a shift operation. And you know what? As we're doing this, I want to throw out another transformation. So since we're using since we're using a chain method, I'm going to extend it a bit and I want to add a default as well and I'll explain as I go. So let's get that in here. All right, very cool. So in this case, I want to be able to execute multiple operations. My first operation will be the shift, which basically says I want to extract the created at field, the ID field, the text field, and the user field from the incoming tweet. And then I want to relabel them. I want to get the new labels for those attributes. And these are the only things that I want from that tweet. I don't want any, any other uh, pieces of information because as you were going to see, it's a lot of information that comes from Twitter. And then after that, I'm going to perform, or I want uh, Jolt to perform the default operation, which basically allows me to add some default value or some default attribute to my incoming JSON. So let's go ahead and give that a whirl. First, I'm going to hit OK and apply this just to make sure I didn't mess anything up. Excellent. We don't have any warning symbols here because even though we have a new processor, the great thing about the NIFI framework is if you have any errors, it'll show up. So let's give this a whirl and see what happens. Hopefully, a lot of people are talking about uh, the Orioles and Ravens today, but we'll see. All right, we got some data going through. So let's go ahead and give this a stop and let's see what happens. So I'm just gonna pull over where my files are saved. As you can see, based on the flow I have defined, I just set it up to save every individual tweet, whether it was the raw form or the transformed uh, version to disk. But just like I mentioned earlier, you know, some of your use cases could be, I wanna save it to HBase, I wanna save it to MongoDB, I want to save it to Hive. Uh, you can do that too. You can also do a merge content in your flow so that you're not saving individual tweet files. You're, you're compiling them all together uh, based on some particular um, characteristics. All right. So let's first look at the individual tweet. And actually, let me look at the last one. All right. So this is the original tweet that came in. Um, they're talking about the spurs here, but notice how large this payload is. There's a lot of information that comes in from Twitter. So our goal was to pare that down and only pull out the attributes that we wanted, as well as add some uh, additional information. So here is that same tweet. I'm using the file name to say, hey, this is the exact same tweet, but pare it down. So now we see not only did we have the attributes that we want, but we also have the label changes as well as that mocked uh, default value. So that's just a good example on how you could just pare down. And if you go through a lot of Jolt, you can get uh, just a, a great set of additional transformations out of the box that you could do in order to achieve a, a more pared down uh, tweet or JSON result. So the other great thing about this processor is even though we were using that very simplified view, it's, it's very easy for me to mess this up. You remember earlier, I was just making sure I carefully pasted the second operation that I wanted in this chain. But, you know, what, what if I messed that up and I'd have to go save this and attempt to run the flow where you see immediately that something was wrong. So if I wanted to just try it before I buy it, so to speak, I can go into the advanced UI. So this advanced UI gives me the opportunity to try out my Jolt specifications against, well, with a particular transform against some test JSON data. So it just gives you an opportunity to visually see whether or not your specifications want to work 
before you actually apply it to your flow. So in this instance, let's just take one of these raw tweets. So I'm just going to go ahead and open up one of the raw tweets that we received here. All right, actually it was that same, similar tweet, there we go. And we'll paste it into this input window. Remember, this is the uh, specification we set up earlier. I can format it so I can easily see what we have going on here. And once I format it, I can validate, uh, and it says the specification is valid. And it all it does is validate not only that this is well-formed JSON, but also that this particular specification matches up with the transformation we selected. So once I've validated, I can also hit the transform button. And now we see the pared down uh, version of what we've asked for uh, before the exact data that we want to test against. So now you see it's pared down, it has a default value, and that looks good. So I can say, all right, I'm good to go. I can save this. Can't save it now because we haven't made any changes to it, but let's go ahead and make a quick change to it. So I can alter this in real time. Let's say I just want to show this as date time. Go ahead and transfer that. I think that looks great. And now I can save this because I made a change to it. Then once you save from there, you can go ahead and execute your flow. Let's see what you give that a whirl. All right, got some data. And let's make sure we got the changes we're looking for here. Transform tweet. Let's look at the last one. All right, awesome. So you see this tweet now has our new date time. So that's just a really quick demo on how to use the new Jolt Transform JSON processor. As I said for, before, this will be available in version 0 0.7. And a couple of other things to look forward to is the uh, customization. So we'll have the ability to allow users to add custom transformations. We're also working on some things to do uh, variable registry. The community is working on variable registry and that will also make the JSON transform, uh, process, the Jolt transform uh, JSON processor a lot easier, more flexible actually to use. So if you want any more pieces of information, if you have any more questions, you can go to my blog, which is lonify.blogspot.com, and feel free to put your comments here. Or as always, you can access the Apache NiFi mailing list and send anybody in the community questions. Thanks so much for checking this out, and uh, stay tuned for more stuff to make NiFi easier.